This episode is all about dirty words. So um, I, I find it a great irony in organisations that um, this word experimentation is a super, super dirty word. And I think where it comes from is that when, certainly in the, in the, in the context of um, office environment and, you know, working through our corporate mandate, um, experimentation, I think, sounds to people like not knowing answers. Um, it sounds like chaos. It sounds like trying a whole bunch of things and hoping that something sticks. It sounds like people in panic mode. It sounds like we're uncoordinated, we're disorganized. Um, and I think it just activates people on all of those levels because I want to make sure that I'm the type of leader that's in control, has answers, knows where we're going. And somehow that word experimentation seems to kind of fly in the face of that. Certainly in, in um, I guess, the common use of the word. But it's, it's this great irony to me because experimentation doesn't have to be a dirty word. In fact, we want to be encouraging that experimentation in our organizations so that we're learning. And the, the root of the word comes from the scientific method, which is all around, let's come up with a hypothesis and let's test that. Let's prove or disprove that hypothesis. And experimentation is the process by which we structure and design a series of interventions, um, a series of tests, for the purpose of proving or disproving a hypothesis. And there's actually a whole heap of clarity that goes into designing and structuring your work that way. And so I find it really funny that within most corporates that I work, experimentation is this dirty word. Um, double down on the irony when you then talk about wanting innovation and wanting um, you know, all of these exciting, sexy new ideas, and yet the fear that goes with that word experimentation, which is actually critical for us to get to um, true innovation, which I, I describe as ideas that are able to be commercialized or put into action. Um, and experimentation is, is built into uh, the learning process too, right? Like we've already talked about the learning cycle and that process of taking in sensory information, making meaning out of it, coming up with um, reactions, hypotheses, and then putting those out into the world through action um, so that we can understand the new sensory information, that new concrete experience that's coming in as a result of having put something out in the world. So experimentation is built into our learning cycle, and yet it's not a word that we use in the office because it's, it's dirty. It's, it sounds like chaos. It sounds like disorganization. It sounds like I'm not in control and I don't know the answer, and that's a scary place to be. Uh, not only for ourselves, but because of corporate culture. Um, now, you and I are trying to change that, right? So, it doesn't have to be a dirty word. Um, how do we break that cycle? How do we start to make this commonplace and comfortable, to a degree, um, or at least familiar, in terms of understanding what it means to experiment with things, what it means to learn, what it means to fail? And so, the, the way that we go about that, super simple, follow that same experimental method. We want to start with structured hypotheses for the work that we're doing. Start with those measures of what is it we're trying to achieve? What's the impact we're intending to have? And how will we know? So it's structure an outcome, ideally around something that's going to be beneficial for customers rather than implementing a new piece of IT kit. It's not an outcome. Uh, so structuring that outcome in a way that says, here's what we're trying to achieve. This is our hypothesis for what we think will happen as a result of building and what, how will we know? How will we know we've been successful? What are those measures? So structured hypothesis measures. If we can get that far, that's huge. That you would not believe the number of organizations that I walk into who have sometimes not even put benefits up front. Um, you know, sometimes it's really qualitative in terms of the benefits that we're trying to achieve and yet we, and then we get to the end of the project and most organizations are almost not ever measuring those benefits because at that point the project managers walked away onto the next thing and it's just not happening, right? So you wouldn't believe the number of organizations that are really lacking in just that basic structure of here's what we're trying to achieve and did we measure if it actually happened? So that's the first loop to close is around structuring the hypothesis, the measures by which we'll know we've been successful and actually following through on that and measuring it once the piece of work is done. 
helps if you're small sizing your work rather than spreading it across three years. Um, so that maybe some of the people that came up with the idea are the ones measuring it and still have the accountability for delivering what we thought we were going to deliver. So that's the first piece. And then the second, the second thing that we can do is um, to stop berating ourselves for not doing it perfect all the time and start small and build up. So start in some of those areas maybe where you've got teams that are super willing to try new things. Start in areas where um, the, maybe the, that particular team or that particular um, business unit has a really clear purpose in terms of what it is that they're there to do and maybe your measures are really simple. So start small. It's okay to start with the easy one first. It doesn't have to be the most challenging right off the bat. Um, and thirdly, we, we want to have that ability to stop and switch direction at any point. So as we're starting to restructure our work in this way, as we're starting to build in that intent and that impact and knowing when we're successful, we also want to build in stoppability. And so that means smaller commitments. You will hear me harp on and rant about breaking work down into small chunks. What we're actually trying to do there is to introduce this concept of stoppability so that at any of those points where we've delivered something, it's in its entirety, it's in its whole, um, you know, we've got some value out of it, we've got some um, learning or understanding out of it and as much as we possibly can and it's okay to stop because we haven't made these huge commitments that span multiple, multiple months and years before we actually get any results. So that's the third piece. So step one, make sure that you're structuring around what's the impact that we're trying to have, how do we know we've been successful. Uh, the ninja trick there is what's the smallest thing that we can do to demonstrate that before we actually start investing a lot in this opportunity. Um, secondly, we want to start small and build up. It's okay to start with the easy areas where we've got clear measurement of benefits um, or we've got clear purpose that we can anchor around or maybe we've got a team that's really willing to dive in and get their hands dirty and to figure this stuff out. And thirdly, we want to build in that stoppability. So as you're structuring your work, make sure that you're not structuring for multiple months and years before you get some kind of tangible outcome. Make sure that you're looking at right-sizing that work and you're building in those points where you could actually stop and go, okay, line in the sand, we've achieved this much, that's enough. Um, we can go and reposition and we could go and look at doing something different. Or we can keep building because clearly we're getting benefit, it's the right thing to do. And we want to accelerate that and we want to actually invest more in that avenue. But building in that stoppability is going to give you just another reinforcement around closing the learning loop, the opportunity for feedback, the ability to pivot and reset that hypothesis. Because remember, that could change through the process of that learning journey. So that's it. Super quick from me today. Um, experimentation, dirty word, doesn't have to be, probably shouldn't be. Um, and a couple of tips as to how you can start to build that into your organization and start to get closer to um, what it looks like to genuinely enable innovation uh, in your company. So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. Thank you for listening and I'll see you again real soon.